In a previous session of Introduction to Computational Chemistry at Valparaiso University, I went through a very quick introduction to how to open Gauss View and build a molecule and then use Gauss View to submit a calculation to Gaussian 09. What I'd like to do in this session is very briefly give some examples of how you edit molecular structures using the powerful features of the Gauss View program. In order to do this, of course, I need to go back through the steps of opening up XMing, which is the program that we use to visualize graphical output that's generated by the Gauss View program, and then I also need to open up a PuTTY session. And we created one last time. I called it New Server. You can call it whatever you want to. You'll, whatever you named it, you highlight that, load it, and then open the session and log in. And then again, your instructor or your research advisor will have given you a uh, compute node that you are supposed to use for the purpose of doing your calculations. And you connect to that using the secure shell command, SSH minus Y, and then the compute node name, which might be something like compute-1-7. So once that's done, you can open the Gauss View program with the command GV. What the ampersand does here is it runs this process in the background so that I come back to the command line at this point and I could uh, do further typing if I wanted to. Now we've got the Gauss View builder window and the Gauss View view window open. And so let's just build another simple molecule. Let's just look at ethane. So if we click in the view window and then click again on one of the hydrogen atoms, you'll be able to see that we've created C2H6, or ethane, and it's in here the familiar uh, staggered geometry, where the hydrogens on one carbon nest in between uh, the two hydrogens that are attached to the other carbon. And it turns out that this is actually the most stable uh, arrangement for ethane. Now, Gauss View has a number of powerful tools. Uh, I talked in the previous segment about how you can use the inquire mode, which is what you get when you click the question mark, to interrogate the molecule, to basically see uh, what are some of the bond lengths, bond angles, and then dihedral angles uh, in the structure. So if I wanted to know, for example, what the carbon-carbon bond distance is in this mode, I would just click on the two carbon atoms. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, of the view window, you can see that distance in angstroms. And the two atom numbers, C5 and C1, are listed as well. All right, now what if I wanted to know the bond angle? Uh, I could look at the H, C, H, C, C bond angle, and you can see that that's the familiar tetrahedral angle of 109.47 degrees. And then, if I wanted to go one step further, there's another angle that characterizes molecular structures, and that's called a dihedral angle. Uh, some books will call it a torsional angle. And the way that works is we're going to look at these four atoms here, H, C, C, H. All right? And the dihedral angle, which is symbolized with a D, is listed here as uh, essentially 180 degrees, uh, 179.889. So the structure was not created with a perfect 180 degree dihedral angle. But what this angle means is if I look along the axis of the two atoms in the middle, in this case the carbon atoms, so let me rotate the molecule. Again, I'm using the left click uh, and then the mouse in order to do this. Now, looking along that carbon-carbon axis, the dihedral angle is the angle of rotation it would take in order to bring atom 1 here, the hydrogen, all the way around to the position of atom 4. And you can see that about an axis that's perpendicular to the viewing window, that atom 1 would have to be rotated through 180 degrees to get to the position of atom 4 in this projection. 
So that's what a dihedral angle is. And uh, using the question mark or the inquire feature, I can just uh, determine what these values are. What if I want to change them? What if, for some reason, I wanted to change the carbon-carbon bond distance? So you see there's a tool called the Modify Bond Tool in Gauss View. So you click on that, and then click on the two atoms in question. And there's some features now in a new dialog box that you can use. Uh, you, there's a slider bar, for example. And so if I click and drag the slider bar, I can adjust the carbon-carbon distance. And so uh, I can do that with the slider bar. I also could do that if I wanted to directly by typing numerical values into the, uh, the window here. And so those are two ways of doing it. There are features here for what you want to do to those two atoms while you're changing the distance. So for example, I could choose to leave atom 2 fixed and only let atom 1 translate. And so the difference if I did that would be, as I move the slider bar, only one of the atoms would move and not the other one. And so uh, there are various features that Gauss View allows you to do. I'm going to cancel out of this uh, because I'm not intending to change that carbon-carbon bond distance, but I might want to in some cases. How about a bond angle? If I wanted to change a bond angle, I use the Modify Angle tool, and then I could change, if I click on H, C, C, like this, then I could change that angle, and I have options for what I allow the three atoms to do while we're changing that angle. I'll just leave them in their default uh, values here, but if I grab the slider bar, then I'm basically modifying the molecule in a way that changes that, uh, that HCC bond angle. All right, so that's kind of an interesting tool. As you build more and more complicated molecules, you may find that capability useful. And then just to make it clear again how to do the same sort of modification for the dihedral angles, I could modify the dihedral angle. And let me rotate the molecule just a little bit here, because what I will do now is rotate uh, the dihedral angle, change the dihedral angle to take ethane from its staggered uh, configuration here into an eclipsed configuration. So if I go H, C, C, H over here, right, now the window pops open because I've identified four consecutive atoms that are connected together like this, and you can see that that uh, dihedral angle is around 60 degrees. And because of the way that the direction of these rotation angles is defined, it's actually negative 60, uh, because in order to do this, I would have to take atom 1 and rotate it counterclockwise to get it to the position of atom 4, and that would be roughly a 60 degree rotation. It turns out that uh, uh, in Gaussian and uh, uh, other programs that counterclockwise angles are actually negative. Clockwise angles are defined to be positive. Uh, so here, it's approximately a 60 degree angle, but I could change that. And so if I did, look what would happen. If I change it and make it smaller and smaller, I can get it into a position where that angle is zero. And now you'll see quite clearly that those hydrogens, if we look along the carbon-carbon axis, those hydrogens eclipse one another. Uh, they, if, if you look perfectly along that axis, they obscure one another from view. That's what we mean by an eclipse configuration. And so uh, one can actually modify this uh, in a very flexible way by just dragging the slider bar. And once again, if you really, really wanted to have that angle to be exactly 60 degrees, and it was hard to do that with the slider bar, you could just type in 60.0, and then it would adjust the structure uh, to reflect that. Okay, so if I decided that was okay, then that would give me this structure in now the familiar staggered configuration. So there are uh, lots of different ways that you can use these tools, the modify bond, modify angle, and modify dihedral angle tools in order to change the geometry of a molecule that you're building. And this can be very helpful in creating input files for very complicated molecules or slightly modifying one that you've previously created. So, I hope this is helpful, and uh, happy building molecules.